Welcome, everybody, to Totally Tasty Torah. I am Rabbi Peter Gaines, joined by a multitude of wonderful friends here at Beth Yeshua, House of the Risen Sun. All right, well, wonderful. We want to get started here. We're in Parasha Tetzaveh this morning. Again, this is Exodus 27, verse 20, where we are. But uh, let's pray. Abba, we just come before you right now. We lift you up, exalt you. We thank you for once again another Shabbat. And uh, obviously you thought it was important because you gave it to us for 52 times a year. And so, Lord, we want to rest on this day. And when we say rest, we want to rest in you. And we can't think of a better way than doing that than reading your book of instruction. So we lift you up and exalt you. We thank you for those who are here live and in person at Beth Yeshua and those who are joined us virtually. It is something that defies my imagination. That I never thought we would be able to do this. So we have other parts of Florida, and Canada, and South Africa, and it is just a thrill to come and, and break open with all of you as friends. Mishpocha, you are friends, you are family. And I just am thrilled that everybody's here. Lord, we ask for your blessings and for you, Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, to be poured out on us this morning as we discuss your word. So we lift you up and thank you in the name of Yeshua. Father God, we just bring before you right now, Lord, it is critical that we uh, pray for our brother, Eddie Garcia, uh, a member of this congregation, who last night was bike riding and was hit by a car. And so he is in the hospital. Uh, Eddie, if you don't know, is a stroke victim the mere fact that he can ride a bike and goes on these 10-mile hikes on the bike almost every day is just extraordinary. But uh, somebody didn't see him last night and hit him, and he is in mega pain. He's in the hospital. And, Lord, we just ask that you minister to him as we speak. We ask that you remove the pain that he's in, uh, Lord, that you restore his ability to walk, and, Lord, that you give the doctors profound wisdom as to how to deal with this unusual situation. We just ask for your touch on Eddie. Help him to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are with him in that room as we speak. And we just lift you up and exalt you and praise you for the touch that you're doing. Right now, corporately, we are praying for our brother Eddie Garcia. We lift up the service before you and Rabbi Adrian as he brings the word Lord this morning on the music, on the lighting, and everything that we do, Lord, because we do it all as unto you. We lift you up and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua HaMoshiach the King, Yeshua, our Messiah, our righteousness. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Inevitably, as we get started, um, we always ask for God sightings, things that happened in the course of the week that uh, anybody would like to share. Diane, I think you had a... I was talking about my periwinkles. Your periwinkles. So I, I had I had uh, a container garden on the back porch, and my, my periwinkle was doing really well. It was just getting really big, but it was falling over the edge of the pot. So I, I, I cut the one off that was falling over the edge of the pot, and it had a unopened flower on it so I put it in water in the bathroom and after it was off the plant and in the water a couple days later the, the little bud it still opened up and it made this beautiful flower and and the and the and the, the flowers on these periwinkles are extra big I don't know how I got so lucky but anyway just beautiful Man. I don't know if luck entered into it at all. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that is a thing. Okay, great. I mean, God's in all things, amen? amen. Even in the periwinkles. <laughs> he knows so, the desires of our heart, and he blesses us. He knows exactly. the desires of our heart. Lord. Yeah. And uh, having a garden, whether it's flowers or vegetables or whatever it happens to be, 
there's something really special about that. One of the houses that we had up north, uh, we had a big open garden in the back. Uh, it was there before we moved into the house, and we discovered that there were tons of asparagus planted in that garden. And I didn't realize that. There were big asparagus. I want to tell you, when it comes up out of the ground and you till that soil and they blossom and bloom and you eat them, OMG. <laughs> it is truly something else when it's something that is a result of what you've cultivated. And uh, I know that uh, my uncle, um, may he rest in peace, uh, when we grew up in, in, in Connecticut, he had an 80 by 80 foot garden in the backyard and their house sat on an apple orchard. So he was very resourceful, and he made just under the legal limit of apple wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you, recorded. everybody, every time somebody came to visit, they left holding one of the bottles of apple wine. But, <laughs> but the, the things that he planted in the garden, I mean, he planted zucchini that looked like watermelon. I'm telling you, this guy had a green thumb. And he uh, he spent, he was an artist. And as much time as he spent in the loft painting, he spent in the garden cultivating and tilling. Uh, they made uh, peppers that grew hollow that were made for stuffing. Okay. Uh, tomatoes that were hollow that were made for stuffing. Yellow tomatoes. Incredible what came out of that. And my aunt made the most memorable thing I can remember. She made tomato marmalade. Oh, my gosh. It was like nothing I've ever tasted. Anyway, let's move on. I want to share your <laughs> sure, I have a praise report that was about a month ago, but now I'll share that Adrian's son, Adam, who's in the Air Force, was waiting on the secret clearance to come through. It was delayed. He was getting bored. He was getting frustrated, thinking, he wouldn't be able to do the technical work. And we prayed that somebody, that God would light a fire on whoever was holding it up. And it came through. Amen. 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 God answers prayer. That's why we're here. Amen. All right. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? Good morning. Shabbat shalom. Good morning. Shabbat shalom. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Um, I had applied for a job and I got a, a, a response, as you know, a lot of companies do. We regret to inform you da 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 da. A week or so later, um, I got another email. They said, Oh, you're just what we're looking for. Arranged an, inter an interview, so I'm hired. And it's well, the job well, that I wanted, $2 more an hour that I was making. I've been out of work for three months and I'm just, praise God. I'm able to work as a 73-year-old registered nurse full-time. And um, I just wanted to say hi. And thank God. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Very happy for you. Praise God. That's great, Nikki. Thanks for that. Thank All you. Right. That's your prayer. I would think that in your profession, you would be in great demand. Indeed. All right, fantastic. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? Becky, you're all set there in New York? I'm here. Good Hi, morning. Becky. Are you warm? <laughs> I'm warm inside, but it was cold yesterday. I don't know how it is today. <laughs> oh, well. Shabbat shalom, Rebecca. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Who says, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Lufuno, nice to have you with us again. Good morning. Okay, let's get started. Again, Exodus 27, verse 20. It is called Petzaveh. Petzaveh. And who's the first person that can translate that for me? Oh, and you shall command. You shall command. Okay, not a suggestion, it's a command. Okay, you shall command. And uh, it is very specific. Um, and Sandra on her iPad 
was kind enough to uh, bring us, maybe you could bring that back up again, um, bring, share a very nice, colorful picture of what's going to be talked about today. Maybe we could pass that around. Actually, I'm going to show it on the screen here for a minute. Okay. Uh, among other things, I didn't want to hesitate. Oops, lost it. There it is. Can you guys see that? Yes. Is it clear? Is it yes, clear? we can see it. Yes. And the e pod, the press plate, the sash. Okay. All of those things we're going to be talking yes, about. Yes. The detail of the tunic and. Everything. Okay, very elaborate. Okay, the turban. And there's a, uh, a, a, a plate on the turban. Okay. That says, yeah. holy. Amen. Oh, look at that. Okay. Uh, our brother Jorge has a talit uh, cover case. And on it is a symbol of the breastplate. The breastplate. This is so easy. Can you grab that? Can you grab it so we can show that? Yeah. Okay, here's here is his cover. You see that? <laughs> All right. Very nice. Very nice. There's something in here besides a tully. <laughs> <laughs> Contraband. <laughs> All right. Let's get busy with the word. We only have so much time. You can dress him up and he can come out. I was. Oh, there you go. <laughs> also, you are to command B'nai Israel. They are to bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually. What lamp are we talking about? What? Menorah. The menorah. Okay. But what do we have here that is supposed to that's supposed to burn continually and over every oh, in every synagogue we have? Um, I, do, I forget the Hebrew name, but it's the, the eternal light. The eternal light, which is called Ner Tamid. Ner Tamid. Okay. Is that the, the light that burns over the ark? Yep. Okay. Wow. And I can I remember being bar mitzvah standing on the stage with the rabbi, and the eternal light was right there over the middle, which is where typically it is in the synagogue. Okay, it burns all the time, and that's why we have Hanukkah because the light was extinguished when the temple was destroyed, and they went out. They tried to find oil so they could rekindle the light. They need the Maccabees, and. Um, and they thought they had enough to burn for oil for a day, but it didn't burn for a day. It burned for eight, eight days. What, what is the name of that again? Eternal. An e R. Second word, Tommy. T A M I D. Thank you. Tommy, eternal light. Can I stick a phrase report? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So on um, last uh, Sunday, we uh, went to. Uh, unfortunately, a, a memorial for our neighbor that had passed. They had it in the temple nearby us, and um, and so there were a lot of people who showed up. There were Seventy people. It was a beautiful memorial. Anyway, afterwards they had they had a lunch luncheon. So we're all sitting around this big room, all these big tables, and the woman that was sitting at our table was one that stood up and spoke at, during the memorial. So I I started talking to her, and somehow or other it came up that we're from I'm from Jersey. Where I said, Linda. She goes, Oh, she said, Did you go to Asha Chesed Temple? I said, Yes. She said, My friend went there, and she she lives two doors down from her, where I live in Century Village, and I would have to introduce you to her. I must know her maybe because we're about I would imagine the same age, you know. So that's isn't that oh, something? And Lord brings people. His people together. For me, Lord brings his people together. Yes, he yes. establishes yes. these threads. You know that sometimes people miss, but uh, you know when you think about it, what was the thread that brought brought you here and led you into a relationship with him, right? I mean, again, I clearly remember a gentleman who walked into my theatrical supply store in Rhode Island, of all places. Okay, we, we 
got into business together, and all of a sudden I was invited to a Bible study in his home. The rest is history. Amen. Let's Amen. read on. Who would like to read? I guess I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 28? 20, 20, 20, 21. No. Okay. In the tent of meeting outside the curtain, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons will set it in order to burn from evening to morning before Adonai. It will be a statute forever throughout your generations on behalf of B'nai Israel. Okay. So you can do it for a couple of weeks, right? Burning the statute uh, for a couple of weeks? Yeah. What no. does it say? Wow. Can say you were forever. Yes, forever. Amen. Okay. Now we're on chapter 28. Exodus 28. Bring your brother Aaron near with his sons from among Bnei Israel, so that they may minister to me as Kohanim. Aaron and his sons Nadab and Ab Abihu, Abihu. Abihu, Eleazar, and Itamar. You are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron for splendor and for beauty. Okay. For what? Splendor and beauty. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. concerned about splendor and beauty. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this this morning. Philippians, what is it for? Eight, is that what it is? Think on these things. Whatever things are. Whatever things are lovely, whatever mm -hmm. things are beautiful. Bright, noble. Um, if anything, if anything is praiseworthy or excellent, think about things. The first time I read that, I thought, this is not Paul speaking, this is God speaking through Paul. Amen? He's moving Paul's lips. But Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are beautiful, do you think he's concerned about those things and everything in, in what he created here and now? Vicky. Rabbi, people don't understand that God also gives commands in the New Testament. He's not suggesting for you to think about these things. He says, think about these things. Right. Yeah, not not when you happen to have a couple of minutes. Exactly. Right. Think about these well, things. What do we know about the Brit Hadasha. It's a repetition of, of, of Torah. It's an explanation. Of it's an explanation. It's an explanation. Right, but okay. when further definition. When when Christians, the church says we don't have to follow the Torah, but you are because it's here. That's right. Well. Precisely. You cannot know the Brit Hadasha without knowing Torah. Simple as that, Diane. God, beauty is very important to God because he, he's he's got it all over creation. I mean, the heavens at, at night, the sky in the daytime, the flowers, the trees, any, anything in nature, any kind of animal you can think of, the human body, everything. He's, he's beauty is very important. It's like his expression of how much he loves us. Thank you for that. But and that's from a scientist, right? <laughs> There's beauty in science too. There is indeed. Like in math, it's like there. When you really study it, it is very beautiful. It's in there, and there's truth in there, which I like. Is truth in there? Lefuno is asking, uh, why is there such an emphasis on Torah and not necessarily Tanakh? Okay, anybody want to answer that question? What's the difference? No. What is the difference? What is Torah? Torah, the first five books, there it's a book of instruction. Tanakh right. is is the writings of the prophet and the books of wisdom. Right, but everything is laid out for us, Lefuno, in Torah. Okay, so uh, and again, it repeats itself in the Brit Chadasha. Okay, uh, and uh, again, when he decided to walk amongst us, he wanted to make it clear, for lack of a better term, clarify what might have been missing in his children. Okay, in other words, there was so much time that passed. Obviously, the Lord chose to flood the earth because the people missed the thing, and he wanted to wipe it out, etch a sketch. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> wipe it out and start all over again, which he did. Okay? And, and we and still so, jacked up. Say again, Libby. And we still jacked up. <laughs> We're still too messed up. <laughs> Linda. Great reboot. I have a comment when when. Yeah. One second. 
Thanks. One other point that is fairly important is that all the Jewish people around the world are reading the same Torah portion. So if you want to be a light to your Jewish friends and neighbors, you can talk about this yes. Torah portion to them. Precisely. Libby. Um, when you said that you could imagine that it wasn't Paul saying that scripture, but it was God, we're about to read in, in um, Exodus that literally God was talking to Moses and Moses was writing it down. It was like God was dictating. We're going to read that in a few chapters. And um, yeah, th this word is Holy Spirit, God inspired, and it is the entirety of it is true. Amen. Amen. Uh, oh, you know, the splendor and the beauty, this is our requirement, or oh, this is the the sense that the people is the reflect is reflect what the spirit has this person, right? If for the it's opposite, it's um you know it's a undecorated person, then it shows that the God is is something else. But with the beauty we are reflected that God is in northern is in control, God is powerful, God loves us, we feel the love of the Lord and we want to you know, to share this, this beauty to the world. Amen. Right? Amen. That's great. Okay. Uh, let's read on because it's a, it's a long parish shot. Number three. We're on verse three. Number yes. 28-3. Three. You are to speak to all who are skilled, whom I have filled with the spirit of artistry, to make Aaron's ga ga garments for consecrating him, so that he may minister to me as a Kohen. These are the garments that they are to make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a tunic of checkered work, a turban, and a sash. They are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so that he may minister to me as a Kohen. They are to use the gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. Does it say, when it, when it says, uh, you are to speak to all who are skilled, whom I have filled with the spirit of artistry? Does that remind you of anything? Anyone? When they were building the tabernacle, there were people that were very skilled in craftsmanship. Do you remember their names? Oh, oh, William and Bezalel. Bezalel. Amen. Amen. They're in scripture, too. Okay. Uh, and, and it's remarkable that and Moses refers to them and says, I can't believe you guys you know, know everything that the Lord told me. It's as if you were with me on the mountain, all right? So he's obviously filled other people with skills to do everything that he's about to do here. Verse 6. Yes. They are to make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of the skillful craftsmen. It is to have two shoulder pieces stitched to the two ends so that it may be joined together. The skillfully woven band which is upon it, with which it is to be bound, is to be made like the design and from the same piece of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. You are to take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of B'nai Israel, six of their names on one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth. With the work of a gem, gutter, cutter, engraving a seal, etch the two stones in the order of the names of B'nai Israel. Okay, anybody know the name of a person who does stone engraving like that? Not a name of a person, but Jew. the name of the profession. Jew. Mason. No. Stone? Um, Mason. No. My grand, my grandparents used to uh, do stone cutting and make jewelry, but I can't remember the name of it. But you remember, lapidary. Yes. Ah. yes. Yes. Yeah, file that one away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a whole, Matt, there's a whole journal. Or a lapidus. They even have their own journal called Lapidary Journal. I remember that. Yeah. But I can't help but think, you know, when, when you read Talmud, they suggest, and again, it's that's the oral law, not the written law, not God's law. But they suggest that back then, because they didn't have the laser tools that we now have to do that, that it was a worm hmm. that the Lord used to engrave the stones. Okay, I'm 
cautious about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm not saying that's a fact. He's saying it's interesting that that's what the Talmud suggests. That's again the word of the rabbis, not the word of God. Okay. Following after um, eleven, uh, the, nice and loud. Sure. Yes, make them enclosed in settings of gold. Twelve. Fasten the two stones upon the shoulder pieces of the ephod to the memorial stones for B'nai Israel. So Aaron is to bear their names before Adonai on his two shoulders as a reminder. Fashion filigree settings of gold along with two chains of pure gold of braided work and you will attach the chains to the filigree settings. Make a breastplate of judgment, the work of a skillful craftsman. You are to make it like the design of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It is to be square and doubled over, a span in length and a span in width. Set within it for four rows of jewels, a row of ruby, topaz, and emerald for the first row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond for the second row. A jassy? Jassy. Yes. And a agate? Agate. 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 And an amethyst for the third, and a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper for the fourth row. They are to be enclosed in gold filigree settings. The stones are to be engraved in the order of the names of B'nai Israel, 12 according to their names, like the etchings of a signet seal. And it signet wasn't very seal. long before mm -hmm. I realized that I had a problem. Oh, she got, they've got you on the thing. My marriage needed saving. Oh. I needed saving. And you I, be two I just, I was trying to think of that myself. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to start at 21 what? again. <laughs> uh, right. Sir, done. Verse 14. Uh, change the, the meaning of the word filigree. What is filigree? Oh. Um, Kind of like woven gold. Yes, yeah. it's very, it's ornate. It's ornate gold. It's actually got little cutouts. So it so looks, it looks lazy. like strings. Yes, work of fine, work of fine wire formed into delicate tracery, typically gold or silver. Delicate. The example says like delicate silver. Delicate Thank you, Google. <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so, and again, when we talked before, I want to back up just for a second. When it talks about the two stones, the work of a gem cutter, engraving sealed two stones with the names of the children of Israel, what are we talking about? Those two stones? Oh, that's the the yeah. What are they call ephods. The Urim and the Thummim. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Evangel. The Urim, Urim, and the and the Thummim. Uh, they are used to for the purposes of uh, either confirming or refuting something that's brought before them as a high priest. Okay, um, Urim is guilty, Thuman is innocent. Okay. So it's sort of like, not like, gam not like gambling, but- You think of like dice? Yeah, but but it's I mean it's not gambling because they it's got ordained or whatever the it is got ordained, but they were used when it, when it was somebody was suspicious of guilt about something. Oh, okay, all right, let's move on. Okay, I'd like to start at twenty one again. Twenty one again. Yes, the stones are to be engraved in the order of the names of B'nai Israel, twelve according to their names, like the etchings of a signet seal, one corresponding to each name of the twelve tribes. Also, you are to make upon the breastplate braided chains of wreathed work from pure gold. Forge on the breastplate two rings of gold and fasten the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Then attach the two wreathed chains of gold on the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. The other two ends of the chains you are to place on the two settings and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod in front. So you are to make two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge of it that is toward the inner side of the ephod. Also make two gold rings and place them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod underneath, in the front, close to where it is joined, above the artful, artfully woven band of the ephod. Then they will bind the breastplate by its rings to the, to the rings of the ephod with a blue thread, so that it may be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and so that the breastplate will not come loose from it. Okay, Sandra, could you... Maybe pass that picture around again. 
uh, so that people can have a Ooh. picture in, in mind as to what that looks like. Ooh. Just pass it around great. so that people can take a look. Okay, go on. Are you sure. talking about blue this way? Okay. 29. Aaron will bear the names of Bnei Israel and the breastplate of judgment on his heart whenever he enters the holy place as a continual memorial before Adonai. Also, put the Urim and the Thummim within the breastplate of judgment so they will be on the Aaron's heart when he goes in before Adonai. Aaron will bear the judgment of Bnei Israel on his heart before Adonai continually. You are to make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue. Okay, and just as a point there, if you're looking at the picture, the ephod is the garment that is underneath, okay? It goes over shoulders in blue depicted there, okay? That, in other words, underneath the, the breastplate, okay? Do you see how much it weighs? Uh, it looks like but it, I, it does say that it was that it was square, that it was one cubit by one cubit, okay? Remember, this is right. a cubit, right. okay? Can you imagine that square? Okay, so that I don't think that's accurate. It's smaller there than depicted. That's what I was thinking when we were reading all this. Yeah. That is some heavy burden yeah. to carry. So I was saying, I wonder how much it weighed. Yeah. Well, you know, when you say heavy burden, I think about the the, the priests or uh, that Aaron had to lift up as a wave offering. <laughs> 80 plus With stones on his shoulders well but he's lifting up people as a way of offering right. okay <laughs> what <laughs> okay. up there. go on okay they were probably say again they were probably stronger back then than we are now <laughs> oh no Okay, let's read on. Was it 32? Do you have a question, John? Well, he, we're better watch over his bird to renew his strength as in the days of his youth. Amen. All right, where are we? 32. 32. Yes. Okay. It is to have a hole for the head in the center and a binding of woven work around the hole as a collar so that it may not be torn. On the hem of it, you are to make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around the hem with golden bells between them, one golden bell and a pomegranate, then another golden bell and a pomegranate on the hem of the robe all around. It must be worn by Aaron whenever he ministers. The sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before Adonai and when he comes out so that he does not die. Okay. In, in a sentence or less, who would like to tell us why a pomegranate? That's what I was going to ask. Isn't, that's what I was going to add. Why the number of seeds in the pomegranate oh, yes. is the same as the number of the uh, oh, yes. or ordinances or laws. Six hundred and thirteen. Six hundred and thirteen <laughs> seeds. <laughs> the next time you go to the market, buy a pomegranate. <laughs> a I, knew <laughs> I, I have been saying that for years. I still haven't done it. Uh, <laughs> But God. But God. But God. Okay. Where are we? Okay. 36. 36. Also, you are to make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engravings of a seal, holy to Adonai. All right. There's a seal that goes on the turban. Okay. Holy to Adonai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Praise God indeed. Go on. 37. Attach it with a violet cord onto the turban on the front of the turban. So it will rest on Aaron's forehead so that Aaron will bear away the iniquity committed regarding the holy things, which B'nai Israel set apart as all their holy gifts. It is to be always to be on his forehead so that they may have favor before Adonai. <clears throat> you are to weave the tunic in, in checkered work of fine linen. Make a turban of fine linen and make a sash, the work of a color weaver. For Aaron's sons, you are to make tunics, sashes, and headwear for them for splendor and for beauty. For what? For splendor and for, for beauty. What? <laughs> Did we not read that before? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, God's into redundancy. Because <laughs> <laughs> we need it. Because we need it's it. The redundancy. It's like a, it's like like he's a born engineer. Like that's what engineers do. Everything. Yeah, redundancy. 
in case something goes bad. This is like we don't hear it the first time. Maybe you'll get it the second time or the third or the fourth. Or the hundreds. Okay. Yeah, but there's certain things that we don't get. Right. All right. No matter how many times. Well, what does he do and what do we do every year so that we get it and so that we can pass it along to our children? The holidays. The holidays, right? The feasts specifically. Okay. Why is this night different from all other nights? Passover. Okay, that is from generation to generation. Okay, specifically for repeating so that the, the generations to follow will know the wonder of Hashem. What's Hashem? You mentioned. Go ahead, Tom. I watched the second half of the Ten Commandments last night, and a little boy asked that question. Why are we doing this? Yeah, I wanted to mention about the turban with the holy to the Lord on his forehead. It's like his thoughts have to be holy to the Lord, as you mentioned, Philippians. Oh, Our yeah. thoughts need to be holy to the Lord. He's trying to cleanse us. He's trying in this boot camp of 40 years to make us holy. As he is holy. Praise God. Okay. The same, the same idea that the cherubim were at the entrance of the paradise. The two cherubims are in, in the Ark of the Covenant. So when the priests enter, it's the same thing. If he is not holy, he dies. Well, that's why he's got bells on at the bottom of his garment. Yeah. Because but, if the bells yeah. stop... But it's, it's exactly what dead. happens with entering to the, the paradise. To, you know, yeah. the Kerouin are keeping, you know, this place holy. The same in the holy, holy place. If, it, if it, the priest is no holy, or he is in sin, or has since then he died. That's right. And so, so, so what, what did we what have? Is, uh, that we must be holy to be in the Amen. Amen. You have to be clean. To be clean. Amen. And uh, an example of somebody who messed up. Moses. This one. And a Bihu. The, the sons of Aaron. Who right. did what? Strange fire. Did what? Strange fire. They made their own incense, not the incense that was prescribed by the Lord, and brought it into, into the Holy of Holies. D-E-D. To quote Rabbi David. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they took them out. They were not obedient. And if there's any place you're going to be obedient, it's in the Holy of Holies. Not only did they bring strange fire, they were also inebriated. No, no. Let's go on. Verse 41. 41. Put them on Aaron, your brother, and on his sons with him, and anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, so that they may minister to me as Kohanim. You are to make linen undergarments for them to cover the skin of their nakedness from the hips to the thighs. They are to be worn by Aaron and his sons when they go into the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place so that they do not become subject to guilt and die. It is to be a statute forever to him and to his offspring after him. Okay. All right. So again, uh, do you think he's missing anything? Does he miss any detail? No. no? He lays it down quite flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What evidence do we have of the fact that he's a god of details? Dark. Okay. I felt like he was very detailed when I saw it. Everything was specific. Oh, yeah, that's right. You saw it. Yeah. So yeah. That was like amazing to see that inside and out. <laughs> I was just blown away by the, just standing in front of that thing. You should take a field trip. That picture uh, that you have on your. You come online yeah. with the ark behind you. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. What else? Give you some other evidence that he's a god of detail. Repeat. 
you. What's that? Every cell in you, your he's body. He's each of us. Every hair, on your every hair on your head, every cell in your body, every piece of DNA or however you want to describe it. Okay, you are fearfully and wonderfully that's made. Just, that's, that, was, that was Dr. Kennedy's mantra. That was that, his mantra. And the, the detail in that, that one sermon of, oh, I think it was the eye, just the eye alone. The, what goes on in the eye. Uh, Remember how we talked about, uh, we talked about circumcision, like when that takes place? Yes. When does it take place? In the NBA, because blood, the, the blood the one day in your life the blood coagulates like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't necessary. They didn't have the chemicals and surgical procedures that we have today because it's normally performed in the hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now they do it. There's a, a rabbi who is called a boil who does that. I right? Spell it. But even now, we've done away with the moil because we have email. What's that? <laughs> email. Email. Uh, He's being funny. <laughs> How do you spell moil? Uh, best best you can. <laughs> Maybe M O Y E L. Uh, How long have you been there? Uh, too long. Well, I do. I do need to acknowledge one email was uh, the head of the service at a um, a bat mitzvah up in Ohio, and she gave she, she did it unexpected, and she said, "If you have anything that you like to anybody you like to pray for, stand up." And, and I stood up, and I prayed for um, Amy's got an uncle who. Um, he had a stroke and a heart attack within a very short amount of time. He's blind. And I prayed that God would restore his vision. And a short time later, I was in the Word, and blind Bartimaeus fit this guy to the T. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, Lord, that you would restore my vision as it was before. And I'm waiting for this to happen. I'm expecting this. Because right. that's God's that God. word. The best thing you could pray back to God is his word. And, that's right. Oh, yeah. Here, I'm ready. What did he say when he walked the earth? He walked amongst us. And he healed somebody. And he frequently said, after he healed them, he said what? Your sins are forgiven. Is are forgiven or go and sin no more. Yes. Amen. All right, yes. let's move on. 29. 29. How to Chapter 29. How to consecrate. 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 consecrate now, this is what you are to do to consecrate them, so that they may minister as Kohanim. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish, along with matzah cakes and matzah mixed with oil and matzah wafers spread with oil. Make them from fine wheat flour. You are to put them into one basket and present them along with the bowl and the two rams. You are to bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then take the garments and put the tunic on Aaron along with the robe, the ephod, and the breastplate. Gird him with the artfully woven band of the Ephod, set the turban on his head and put the holy coronet, coronet on the turban. Then you are to take the anointing oil, pour it upon his head and anoint him. Also, you are to bring his sons and put tunics on them. You are to gird Aaron and his sons with sashes, tie headwear on them, and they shall hold the priesthood by a perpetual statue. In this way, you are to consecrate Aaron and his sons. You are to bring the bull before the tent of meeting. And Aaron and his sons are to lay their hands on its head. You are to slaughter the bull before Adonai at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then take the blood of the bull, put it on the horns of the altar with your finger, and pour out all the remaining blood at the base of the altar. Also, take all the fat that covers the innards, the, the lobe above the liver, the two kidneys, along with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the meat of the bull, along with its skin and its dung, you are to burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. 
comments, subtractions, deletions? So, um, thinking about the clothing that the rabbi wore, Christ, yeah. and and the in Ephesians six, it says. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place. And the helmet of sal and further down the helmet of salvation. So what the priest was wearing was sort of analogous to well to some degree, yeah. yes. But yeah, the others is, is figuratively speaking. Okay, I so that we can made that so what happens? What happens in the Old Testament, in a physical manifestation, sometimes in the New Testament is is in a spiritual manifestation. Okay, all right, Libby, you wanted to expand on that? No, no, no. I just said I never made that connection. That is so cool. Yeah. It is cool that um, the sword in Ephesians is the word of God, which the priests handled right. to the people. So I saw a soldier there, and I thought, how does that match? And that's how it does. Thank you. Rabbi? Yes. I believe Lofuno has a question about verses 13 and 14, she says. Okay, uh, did I miss that? Hang on a second, let me look at the chat. I had a question on verse 13 or 14. I wasn't sure which are, which are these, oh. 13 and 14 says, uh, also take the fat that covers the innards, the lobe above the liver, two kidneys along with the fat. Okay, why all of that, Lafuno? Is that what you're asking? Okay, and I was about to ask, why? Why all of this? Why does he get very specific? He even goes on even further in 15 when he talks about taking the ram. Okay, one was the bull, one was the ram. Why are we doing all of this and all of the business about the innards and taking this part and that part and the blood okay, and the sacrifice in the first place? Why are we doing all of this? Hey, okay, what do we know about the blood? Life is in the blood. It can be no remission of sins without blood. Can you it can be no remissions of sin without blood. Remission. But it's very specific on which parts. It's all the fat that covers the innards, the lobe above the liver, the two things. Also, put the meat in a bowl. Hold on a second, You can mute her, Rabbi. I know We're trying. Hang on a second. Okay, you were saying. God is very big into separating the holy from the common. The common. One more time. Sorry. God is very into separating the holy from the common. Okay. And the common is wholly thrown away. Okay, well, he's very specific about... Yeah. I'm looking at... Um, the kidneys and the liver, which are purifying organs. Now, I'm also thinking about this is a sin offering, and it was a replacement for them being killed. So um, the first sacrifice that's in the temple are those two organs that somehow I'm not sure how it connects. Right. And then the rest, that since it's a sin offering, gets burned outside the camp. What happens to somebody who uh, has leprosy? So, all right. Everything gets outside the camp. So, what is he trying to do? What is what? I mean, separate, what? separate the unclean from the clean. Okay. And that's critical when these people are outside. I mean, if you go camping, Okay. There needs to be a separation of the clean and the unclean. Okay, yes. you've got two million people camping out in the middle of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There needs to be organization here. 
Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to bring it down to practical terms. Um, again, laying the hands on the on the head of the animal. What do we call that? Consecration. Say again, Evangeline. I was thinking it is some kind of a substitution going on there. Transference. 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 Oh, yeah. Transference, yeah. Okay. They do that. So transferring from whom to whom? To what? From the, people. from the people to the animal. The sin of us being transferred to the sin, to the, to the guiltless animal. Yeshua. Yeshua. Okay. Fifteen. I, I, I yes. have a question on my hand. Um, so after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, that's when the Jews did away with the sacrificial system because they didn't have a temple to sacrifice. And that's where the rabbinical came from. That's what I learned recently. Um, but the word of God says that you need atonement. Yeah. They didn't see that atonement in Yeshua, the, the Orthodox. They didn't see it, but I, I, I don't understand how they could do away with it. Besides it being highly inconvenient in modern day <laughs> to be, you know, sacrificing all these lambs. But <clears throat> I don't know. Any comment on that? I think they, they had to do away with it because they no longer had a temple to do the sacrifices. Right. But but there are still Orthodox Jews who still do that. Yes. yes. Practice, yes. practice animal sacrifice. Yes. But it, the, the book of Hebrews say that he offered one time and forever. Yeah. And he entered into the holy, holy place. Correct. Once and forever. Uh, and it's reference to, to the Mashiach. Right, but they're asking and mentioning, you know, the people who don't necessarily, who don't know Yeshua, and don't understand his. But, but, sorry, but they don't know Yeshua because they don't refuse. To that's correct. To be that they right, but what we're saying is that there are still those who will do that, and once they rebuild the temple, which is imminent, okay, they're going to do it all over again. Do you know if they do that outside of Israel, if they're sacrificing animals? I don't know specifically. Because that no. would be against scripture as well. Yes. Yeah. They were only allowed to do it at well, the one temple. Thing, one thing that we do know is that when they start to do that again, what's next? I was returned. Sure, it's coming soon. Who mm -hmm. knows? Thanks, Rabbi. I hope you can hear him now. I can hear you, yes. Yeah, so I, I think uh, my, my general question is how do we relate to this? Me, as I am coming from a different background, which is uh, Christianity, how do we relate to, to, to this sacrificial system? I, I don't have anything against it, but there hasn't really been anybody who explained to us how should this be done. Um, we tried as close as possible for my ordination, but we just don't know what is applicable now, what did Yeshua did, which is no longer applicable. So it's just confusing and uh, what it's is, not really being explained. How do we make sure we relate to this? Right. I think what you're getting at is the fact that that when Yeshua put on flesh and dwelt among us, that he wanted to make it clear that he is the ultimate sacrifice and that all of this sacrificial system was no longer necessary at no. all. Okay? Because he took upon him Instead of there being transference from man to animal, the innocent animal, that he took upon himself sin 
past, present, and future for all humanity. Can yeah. you imagine what he carried to the cross? Mm, I, I do. Okay, so I, I think within the same breath, on the Haftara, it was Ezekiel 43. Ezekiel 43, so, okay. Will that be referring to the third temple? The one that is to come, or is it referring to something that has happened? Okay, I, I have to read exactly what that says. Uh, you have that open? Ezekiel 43? Yeah, it's a, it's a whole lot. I was just asking because it's part of the Haftarah, so I thought... From what is to come, yes. Okay, but yeah, I, think it's a I have it world, opened. The uh, alone... Uh, uh, um, the world to come. Okay, not necessarily the, the, uh, the Messiah. Okay, I think it's talking about the world to come. Post Messiah. Okay, Diane. It's sort of like when you're trying to teach somebody almost anything. So you're trying to teach somebody how to use a how to use a, a skill saw and cut wood. To to just explain it to them with words, it's not going to work because they have nothing to relate to. You have to get the skill saw and you have to actually show them, and that's what he's doing in the Old Testament. He's he's using the, uh, the 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 blood sacrifice as representative of sin, and then the oblation of the incense covers the the uh, the odors of the of the right. blood sacrifice, and so he's he's making a his physical demonstration, and then skip over to the New Testament. Instead of the blood sacrifice of the animals, you have Jesus on the cross, and, it, and it's it's. Now everything is done spiritually and in your head versus physically, but it's like a it's a progression of of teaching the human Excellent. race. Excellent. And again, the whole forty years in the desert was that demonstration, okay, and the that whole sanctification process of pulling them out of Egypt, pulling Egypt out of them, and having them to understand. The magnitude of who he was, what he, how he wanted them to behave, and what he was going to do for them in return. Okay. Okay. And the Bible said, when we read the sacrifice, the correct word is offering. It's offering. Offering. No sacrifice, because we understand that sacrifice is kill an animal, and God is no happy with that, but He is delighted in offering and receive the offering. So Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah, he offered him himself as a propitiation for our sin. It's for a sin, but also all there is there is there are five offering. You know, for sin, for peace, for reconciliation, for um, so, so not our, uh, offering, right? right? So Yeshua offered is the offering, you know, for everything, but Amen. for the sin of the world. So in the future, in the millennium kingdom, in the Ezekiel uh, temple, we are going to continue the the offering, no sacrifice here. Right. The offering, but not for the sin, because the sin is already paid. But it's because Thanksgiving is because it's because um you know, some other over, but no for the scene necessarily. Right, that's correct. Rabbi, my hand's been up for a while. <laughs> well, really, I thought you already asked the question. Please forgive me. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Lafuna, I'll, I, I echo what um, Diane and, and um, Jorge, I mean, Alex has, has said, um, in Revelation, it's written that Yeshua is the Lamb of God that was chosen from the foundation of the earth. And one thing I want to bring 
to light is you said, well, we, how do we apply sacrifices now? In Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the way we apply it is, is submitting to this process of sanctification. And that's our, our modern day application. That's the sacrifice. The, the, the ultimate sacrifice was Yeshua. But there's there's parallels between just like Diane brought up, even there's these parallels between what God established with his people in the wilderness and what how we apply it today. Absolutely right. Absolutely correct. Thank you for that. Libby. OK. Amen. Yes. Can I, and I can I just add one thing to that? Sure, that in in reading all of this now, what we are looking for is lessons that we can apply from what they went through and they were instructed to do. We're looking for lessons. We're not really looking for um, a pattern that we have to follow physically ourselves. I think some people, when they get into the messianic um, stream, they start trying to pattern everything and thinking that they need to do everything that was told to the Israelites in this in the Torah to do. But what we're looking for is patterns that we can apply to the teachings and we that agree with the teachings of Yeshua and that we can apply. We don't we're not looking to become enslaved to this these different um details. The uh, author Stan Pelchin uh, who wrote a book called Betrayed was a book about uh, an Orthodox man, Stan, uh, who one day had his daughter come home from school and proclaimed to him that Yeshua was the Messiah. He went berserk. He went crazy and spent the next year, I mean, this is the Reader's Digest version, trying to, he went out everywhere to establish to her, he went all over the place trying to prove to her that she was completely and horribly mistaken. He was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He was a lawyer. When he came back, he came back safe. <laughs> Only hey, to find his wife and his other daughter were also safe. And they had never, and they, had to they never told him. Too scared. Right. <laughs> a phenomenal book. Uh, but he also wrote another book, uh, and I forgot the name of it, one second, that uh, it talked about Messianic Judaism, and that there are some messianic groups that are so legalistic that yes. it's almost as if they were orthodox yes. Jews yes. trying to follow 613 commandments, yes. which we can't do because only one was able to do that. Yes. Hence, mm -hmm. that whole process that we're talking about, about sanctification. Okay? Um, yeah, time short. What? Yeah, let me, let's move on. This is still some ground we'll never cover at all. Okay. Um, 15. Then take one ram, have Aaron and his sons lay their hands on, upon the head of the ram, then slaughter the ram, take its blood, and sprinkle it around the altar. Jump down to 19. Then take the other ram and have Aaron and his sons lay their hands upon the head of that ram. Transference. Go on. Yes. Slaughter the ram, take its blood, and dab it on the tip of the right ear ear of Aaron, on the tip of the right ears of his sons, and on the thumb of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then pour the blood on the altar all around. Okay. On the tip of the right ear. Tip. Okay. On the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. I think that's symbolic of. Mm -hmm. Yes, Evangel. Uh, Vicky was explaining. Go ahead. The tip of the ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hearing, the thumb, doing, and the toe walking. Right. Wherever you touch, whatever you hear, whatever you, wherever you walk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Needs to be holy. You need to protect what's coming in. Okay. When we talk about computers, you've heard the term G I G O. Yeah, garbage, garbage, garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Okay, conversely, good in, good out. If you put good information into the computer, 
because the computer is only going to do how it's programmed. This is your computer. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Okay, so we need to uh, we need to be aware of that filter. Um, there you go. Consecrate to make it to declare something sacred, set apart for the service of God. Let's jump over to 22. Moreover, take some of the fat from the ram, along with the fat, fat uh, tail, the fat that covers the innards, the covering over the liver, the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, along with the right thigh, because it is a ram of consecration. Jump down to 27. Set apart the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contri con contribution, which is waved and offered up from the ram of rat consecration, including what belongs to Aaron and his sons. Okay, go ahead. Okay, 28. 29. 29, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The holy garments of Aaron are to pass to his sons after him, to be anointed in them and to be consecrated in them. The son that succeeds him as Kohen who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place is to put them on for seven days. Point, go to 32. <clears throat> okay, Aaron and his sons are to eat the meat of the ram and the bread that is in the basket at the entrance to the tent of meeting. They are to eat those things with which atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them, but a layman is not to eat them because they are holy. Okay, 35. Do for Aaron and his sons everything according to what I have commanded you. Consecrate them for seven days. Each day you are to offer a bull as a sin offering, apart from the other offerings of atonement. 37. You are to make atonement for the altar for seven days and so sanctify it. You are to work both holy but it will become holy. Okay, 41. 41. The other lamb you are to offer at dusk, like the grain offering and drink offering of the morning, as a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to Adonai. It is to be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before Adonai. There I will meet with you to speak with you there. Ooh, there I will meet with you and speak with you there. Okay, at the Mishkan, at the tabernacle. I will meet with the children of Israel there, so it will be sanctified by my glory, praise the Lord. 44. So I will sanctify the tent of meeting and the altar. I will also sanctify Aaron and his sons to minister to me as Kohanim. So I will dwell among Mene Israel and be their God. Then they will know that I am Adonai, their God, who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, so that I may live among them. I am Adonai, your God, their okay. God. Question, okay, jump to 30. 30. You are to make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, one cubit, cubit in length, one cubit wide, and two cubits high. The horns must be of one piece with it. You are to overlay it with pure gold on top, all around the sides and over the horns. Also, you are to make a crown of gold for it all around. You jump down to nine. Okay. You must not offer up unauthorized incense on it, nor should any burnt offering or grain offering be there, nor should you pour any drink offering there. Okay. Aaron, Go on. Aaron is to make atonement upon the horns once a year with the blood of the sin offering throughout your generation. Holy to Adonai. Can I hear an amen? the hell